Hey, this is Brandon with Seattle Coffee Gear. I'm here today actually to take you through the programming of a Ranchilio Class 9 Excelsius. Uh, it is a pretty high-end machine, got a lot of features to it, and with that also comes a lot of menus. The nice part is there's a lot of features, there's a lot of menu options, but it's really easy to get through. There's not as many as you think uh, that are actually useful to you as an end user. Um, and Ranchilio does a great job at telling you exactly kind of what everything does. They have this little cheat sheet down here. And basically that cheat sheet tells you what's going to happen with each button. Um, if you look at the top of that area, you're going to see a plus, a minus, an enter, and an escape. What that's telling me is if I'm in programming mode, this is going to be my plus, that's going to be my minus, that's going to enter if I want to actually select something, and that's just going to get me the heck out of there. Just back out, don't want to do it anymore. Um, the third one that you see right there is the little gears. That's actually telling me I can get in and program my volumetric control. Um, the next one is actually a different option. When we're down at the bottom, um, it, it's, it's a function of uh, the machine actually being on or off. Where that's going to take me, you can see actually up top, you have it the button plus on. So if you actually turn off this machine, hit that button, and then turn it back on, it's going to take me to that option. If the machine is actually on itself, you're going to see it's just holding it for 10 seconds. So if I hold this button for 10 seconds, as you can see, there's that little volumetric picture next to it. After that, you're going to see right here, it's going to pop up and give me options for programming my buttons. Um, what that means is my machine's already on, hit that button, takes it in there. Hit that again, it takes me right off. Um, there's really about a couple that you have to worry about. You need to worry about that little man in a suit at the bottom. You need to worry about the little cleaning emblem at the bottom and the volumetric button. And then, of course, the settings buttons, which is up top. So let's go ahead and start with that one since I have to turn the machine off. So we're going to turn it off right now. I'm going to go ahead and hold that button, turn it back on. It's going to make a couple beeps. It takes about 10 seconds or so for it to get into it, but you just keep on holding it. Do not release it until you see the options come up. So now I can release it. It's in my setup mode. So as I said earlier, we've got plus, minus, enter, and escape. Okay. When it goes through, you're, let's talk through the normal options first. So we've got the setup. You've got the Excelsius module, which this machine has. You've got counters. What counters are going to do is tell me how many times each button's actually been hit or actuated. Um, you've got an iSteam option, which this machine doesn't have an iSteam on it, so that won't do anything for this particular one. But you can add an iSteam to this machine, and then I can get into the programming right there. Uh, cleaning cycle is going to tell me if it's been cleaned. I can get in and reset it. So if, uh, if I'm maybe an owner that's not there all the time and I want to make sure my employees are doing it, I can get into that option. Data interfaces is really just for technicians, nothing to worry about there. Same thing on a diagnostic aspect. If you're not a tech working on the machine, you don't need to get into it. Now we take it right back to our original setup option. The reason this one is you have to turn off the machine and turn it back on is the setup is really a very essential part of this machine. And you can do a lot of good or a lot of damage if you get into that mode. Uh, we don't want to make it particularly easy to get on there. So if somebody actually turns it off and does this action, they're trying to get into that mode. Um, so now what I'm going to do is hit the OK button, and that's going to take me into my setup option. First option I get is my pressure setting. What's really cool about this machine versus a lot of others, I don't have to get inside this machine, take a screwdriver to change the pressure stat options. I can change it directly right from here. So I've got my steam boiler right now set at one bar. If I want to change that, I hit OK. I'm going to increase it to 1.2 bars. Hit OK again. Now it's not flashing, it's done. Um, at that point, all I have to do is hit plus or minus, and I can move to the next option. This is something that doesn't really apply to this machine, keyboard modes, four products. We've got the four products right there. You really never want to touch it. It does give you an option for six products, but that's not a machine that's really available here. Um, into the dose setting. This is a really technical dose setting aspect. So there's two ways to get into dose setting. One is the old school way where I showed you before here of just getting into it. You let it run down and stop it where you want. The other option is actually looking at the impulses itself. So if I get through, I'm on group one and I'm on a button one and I hit that, that's going to tell me it's 43 impulses. What that means to you is really nothing. What that means to the machine is that's how it actually controls volume. When you hear people say it's going to do two ounces, really what this machine does is it learns that two ounces is 180 impulses. Okay, there's a little flow meter in there, it's spinning around. When it hits 180 impulses, it stops. What's nice about this though, 
If you are programming it, and let's say we want to run it up to two ounces, everybody, everybody has that time where they run it to just a hair over two. They just want to back it down a little. As opposed to having to waste more espresso, go back inside of it and do the same thing and maybe miss again, you can come into the impulses and just make minor adjustments. So if I want to take it down, say, from 43 to 40, that's going to just take it down a fraction, but that's going to allow me to make that minor change. So I don't have to sit there and trial and error, trial and error. It's really nice from that aspect. From there, I can basically go through here. I can set pre-infusion time on each particular group head, which is really nice. I can also set a pre-infusion pause. And what that's going to do is after it's done pre-infusing, I can stop and let it start running again. Um, brewing times in seconds, you can actually stop it. Right now, it's, it's programmed that's going to run for three seconds, so you can set it from that standpoint if you want. But really, impulse is, is the big thing to keep it on. So from there, I'm going to escape out of there. And then, of course, you can run through all the buttons, um, escape back out of there again, and you can run through all your groups. If we go back out one more time, now it takes me to my main menu again, back to where dose setting is, and I can move on to the next one. Delivery control gives you two options. This machine has a shot counter on here. You can see it when we're running the machine. It's just going to run and let you know that shot took 22, 25 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. You can also change it to read out your impulses. Not a lot of people like to do that, uh, but there are certain people that really want to get into their coffee. They really want to know, yes, this thing did 47 impulses. So you can make that change and make that read. Um, I would recommend just leaving it at the uh, second counter. So we're going to take that out of there. Head on down to the next one. Auto dose settings enabled, meaning it's going to allow this volumetric control to work. Uh, again, it's another thing you probably never really want to change. Units. This one's actually an important one, especially if you don't always want to look at it in Fahrenheit. You can hit this, and from there I can choose. Oops. I can hit that again. I can choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, it's really only two options, but you know that's that's your choice. Um, it's nice if you're working, or especially if you're going to take this to an area, maybe uh, you know in Canada, where you want to use that type of option to it. Uh, if not, here in the states, leave it at Fahrenheit. Back that up. Um, reduce power. This is going to allow it to actually shut down at night. So as opposed to running it full time, it's going to take it down. Doesn't shut it completely down. It runs it at probably about 140 degrees versus 200 degrees, but that does save a lot in the energy aspect. Software regeneration. Um, that's just for the softener. Um, if you know, if you want to keep track of when you actually need to replace that softener, you can do that. Um, maintenance is something that you really don't want to worry about. Boiler sensor. Don't worry about that either. Um, this is set up to, to sense pressure. You can change it, but you have to change components inside the machine. So I wouldn't worry too much there either. Um, same thing with that aspect. That goes back with the boiler sensor. I just skip right through there. Error history file is something that techs use. First startup, if you want to set this thing back to factory settings, you can change it to first startup. If I hit OK there, it's going to ask me confirmation, yes or no. I'm just going to go ahead and escape because I do not want to do that to this machine. Um, and the last thing is the blocking of the tech menu. Uh, most people do not lock it, but you can do it. Put it in a uh, password protection mode if you wanted to. Uh, from there, we're right back to where we started with pressure setting of 1.2 bars. Now, if I just escape out of there, escape again, now it's going to take it right back to the machine. It's going to let it heat up. Your machine's actually on. Once this machine's on, we kind of move to the bottom level. So when you look at those little guys that are down there, this is the machine's on. When you hit it, it's going to do something. Um, basically, my options here are this one. Uh, the right here is actually, it's supposed to be a timer, but it really doesn't do anything. Um, your cleaning module is right through here. And then, of course, if we want to get into more programming mode, this one right here. The way this is going to work, let's say we want to do cleaning just going to hit this. You're going to notice after about two seconds, this group head shuts off. Hold it for about 10 seconds, and it's going to get into a mode. It's going to ask you, do you want to start the coffee cleaning? What that is, that's an auto back flush. So a lot of people in cafes, you, you're there all day and you do the, the back flushing. 10 seconds for, you know, 10 times at 10 seconds each. Take it out, clean it, put it back in. Five times at 10 seconds each. This will do that whole thing for you. So you put it into that mode, you hit yes, it'll start the auto back flush for you. I already showed you this one here before, but I'll get into it one more time. This is the volumetric control that we were talking about a second ago. If you want to not have to deal with the impulse aspect of it, you just want to get in there and program it. Shots of espresso, stop it where you want to. You put it in there and you hit it. You're going to see it's counting up right now, which is the impulses. So whenever you stop it, that's where it's going to be. So now I stop it at 111 and maybe I'm just a little short and I need to add an extra two impulses. I could go back into the main menu 
put those impulses up and you're good to go. Hit that, gets me out of it. Um, last is this button right here. So if we do this, this is gonna take me into a, uh, if you will, it's a manager button. Um, and what this is gonna allow me to do is make some changes that are not terribly detrimental to the machine. You can't do too much damage through here. Um, in the lighting aspect, I have the Celsius blue look right now. Basically, it allows you to, if I want to, change it from blue to red. If you like blue, like red, you can do that. Um, we'll go ahead and leave it at red. I like red a lot better than blue. Um, from there, I can also just say no machine lighting if I wanted to just take it off. Um, I can also take the groups, the RGB LED. You notice this one right here as they light up. Uh, that happens. If you just want to leave it on, leave it on. If not, take it away. RGB standby, that is if the machine goes into standby mode, it's going to change to a different color. You'll see there's a couple different options that happen. It's red, green, and blue. And those tell you what's happening inside of your group head. Um, if you want to leave it on, you leave it on like that. Back out. And most of the times when you do that, you're going to have to take it. I've got red right here. You'll have to shut it off, though, if you want to change these outside lights to where they're supposed to be. Getting back into that mode, we're going to go right to here. Once this pops up, it's killing. There we go. Now we can run through what the rest of this stuff does. So I can change my language if I want to. I can change the clock that's on there. Um, if, you're, if you're using any type of auto on features or whatever, you can do that. Um, setting a timer. Uh, standby timer, you can shut it off right through there. You can see all the days of the week that kind of pop up from there. Um, here's a counter function. This is actually really important from a manager standpoint or an owner standpoint. If you want to get into your group, so let's take a look at group one, and I want to look at my button one. I can see button one's been hit 104 times, okay? Button two, 181 times. Button three, 31 times. Button four, 84, or 88 times, excuse me. Um, and now, if I want to get through, you can actually go through group one, group two. If you had three or four group, you can do it. But the nice part shows me my total brewings, but there's a reset button. So let's say every week I want to make sure that um, the times these button is hit is roughly equating out to how many drinks we charge for. Uh, so you're selling 100 drinks a day, but you come inside of here and there's 500 buttons every single day hit. There's something off from that standpoint. So this allows you as a manager to really take it down because you're allowed to reset it. You could do it daily, weekly, monthly, however you want to do it, but it puts controlling um, the, that aspect accounting features back into your hands. Um, this is actually a really unique feature from Rancilio. I do not believe anybody else allows this. It's called Renew Boiler Water. It allows you to actually flush all of your water out of your boiler and put fresh water back in. Um, so if you wanted to get whatever gunk was inside of there, maybe once a week or so, take it out, put all brand new water back in. You hit that button, it's going to drain it out the drain tube, and then it's going to fill it right back up for you. Uh, we are not going to do that because it does take hmm, five minutes or so, and I don't want to do that for this video. <laughs> um, don't worry any about that reset there. The buzzer, that's just, you hear me every time I'm hitting it, it's making that noise. If you want to shut that noise off, if it annoys you, you can turn it off there. And we're right back to lighting. So you can see all the features inside. It's, it's really a managerial aspect, but there's nothing crazy that you can hit in there that can make any changes. Last thing on this thing, and this is actually not on there, but this machine, because it's an Excelsius, has your Excelsius module on it. Uh, there's a couple different things these buttons do. You can either hit that button, this button, or both together. If I hit this button, that's just your power button. What it's going to do, it's going to allow me to tell, it's going to say both my group heads are on, but it's going to allow me to turn on and off group heads. So now that I'm in this option, it's going to say select which group you want to shut off. Any of these buttons, doesn't matter what you do. Hit that button, you're going to see that light disappear, and now that group head's off. If I want to shut that one off, hit that one. Now both my group heads are off. Hit the power button again. Technically, both of these group heads are now shut down. Um, if I was leaving for the night and I want to leave it off, I can do that. That way they're not sitting there running all night. When you come back in the morning or whenever you want to actually turn them back on, just hit the button. It's going to reactivate it. So now you can see this one here is flashing. This one's not because I didn't hit that button. Hit that button, turns this back on as well. So it's incredibly easy to get back on. Literally just hit a button, it's back for you. The other option is this little X button. And if I hit that, it's gonna take me into what's called the barista mode of the Excelsius. And the reason I say that, there's two Excelsius modes that's on there. You have the barista mode and the technician mode. The barista mode leaves you less 
options okay so you can really only move that temperature about five degrees um, that's to make up for any minor differences the barista wants to make the tech mode is going to allow you to have a much wider range of temperature you can do the way you'd get into tech mode is holding both of these down for 10 seconds each right now though i'm just in the barista so i can go through my groups group one and group two this is only a two group machine so it's going to tell you group three and group four is not available same process you're going to hit that right there i can change my profile if i wanted to change it up down or flat flat basically just means that if i want it 200 degrees it's going to give me 200 degrees um, back out of there and come down to my start temperature for group one and go down to my end temperature for group one and you can see i'm profiling that one up because i'm going from 198 up to 203. if i get out of there go to group two same concept i've got profile right there but this one we are profiling down so my start temperature is 201 and my final temperature is 199. and you'll see i'm going to take it in the mode right now i'm going to change this uh, final temperature um, take it down as low as a go 201 is only going to let me go down to 194.9 basically 195 so it's a six degree temperature differential that happens there if i back out of that now we're going to go into the tech mode and you're going to see once i'm in here it doesn't look any different whatsoever than the barista mode um this takes me in it's going to tell me this allows me to actually enable or disable it if i wanted to of course we're going to stick with enabled right now now i'm going to get into group one group two same things you see there the difference is going to be i'm going to go to group two because that's the one we changed uh so we're still sticking with the profile down you can see a start temperature of 201 final temperature of 199 right now what i can do with this is i can actually take this and you're going to see how much lower i can get i can take it down to 190 degrees so this allows you inside of tech mode a 10 degree temperature variance uh, mainly the reason we do that again it's not that hard to get in or out of barista or tech mode but the barista the concept there is they might be making a change by one degree or two degrees to offset for temperature changes or whatever the tech mode is going to allow uh, the head barista manager someone like that to actually get in there and, and make a real significant change both ways if i wanted to um, other than that, it's the only different option of being in tech versus barista mode. So you're not really going to see anything different from there. Factory settings, of course, you can set it right back to factory settings if you wanted to as well. Once I get out of there, though, that's basically the whole concept. And, um, you know, the, the nice part really is that whoever your installer is, your technician should set most of these parameters for you. So you're looking at this right now going, geez, long video, it's a lot of options, but it's really not. As an end user, as a manager, as a barista, you're going to use these buttons here. You might get into that. Um, you, you could theoretically, if you wanted to, get into the main setup to change some of those impulses, but most of the major settings should be done for you, and it should just be minor changes. It's just kind of nice to know, um, what, you know what's happening in those profiles, what's happening in each one of the options. That way, if you get in one of them, you get scared, you don't want to mess up your machine, you can know how to just get out of it. Um, as long as you stay away from some of the major, major things like resetting back to factory defaults, that kind of stuff, you should be perfectly fine. Um, and other than that, you can get in here and really use it to, to dial in that cup of coffee and, and make the best cup you can. Um, if you have any more information, if you have any more questions on it, just go to seattlecoffee.com and you should be able to see it right there.